Hey yo, welcome back to the battlefield everyone. We are here with Eric Wainwright for a Padawan story. How are you, Eric? I'm doing great today. You having fun yet? I'm excited to be here. <laughs> hey, uh, no, truly, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, I know like how much busy schedule you are, especially with uh, your family and all and everything. So I do truly appreciate it. Awesome, I thank you for letting me come. All right, so, but I'm already scared um, because I know how and uh, who or what you're famous for, which is the Padawans, and now you're bringing Plo Koon at me, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, if, if uh, one res or two resources on round one wasn't good, how about four resources, right? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Um, let's give a little bit of time to get the Star Wars Destiny to uh, know a little bit about yourself. Sure, so... Uh... Uh, my name is Eric Wainwright, and I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, so I play down here at Team Covenant, and uh, I've had, like you said, success with Padawans and uh, with their sidekick BB-8 in a handful of tournaments, um, and so that's been my little claim to fame. Uh, I have three kids and a wife here, and um, spend a lot of time coaching baseball or coaching chess and doing stuff with my kids. And then my spare time, I'm basically rocking destiny. The most of the time at down at team covenant, sometimes online. Oh, that's, that's incredible. Like how do you manage to do all that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I actually like when I went to worlds, I actually made a deal with my wife where I got to practice three days a week. So it's been less time since then, but, uh, uh, we made it work and she, uh, allowed me to do that. And so that was awesome. And now I'm back to more of a normal schedule once a week playing. And then, uh, but all the other stuff, I mean, I love doing stuff with my kids. And so when I get to do that, um, and helping out their other friends and stuff like that, that's cool. So I enjoy it. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Oh man. I love being a dad. That's uh, the, one of the greatest feelings in the world. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm watching them grow, and when they learn something that you're like, they're not old enough to know that, and they <laughs> sell it to you, and you're like, oh, we're there. Okay, let's move on to the next stage. It's pretty awesome. So yeah, my uh, three year old like get, tries to get as many dice as she can, like in her little hands, and tries to like <laughs> roll them all over like either the carpet or the table, wherever she's at. Yeah, the day that D and D days came out, and it wasn't just six sided dice anymore. Their eyes went wide. You know? <laughs> All right, let's do this. We didn't even draw up yet. Let's get some get some cards. All right. Um, questions. All the questions. Let's see here. I'll keep three of mine. And I'm excited to see you playing Snoke. I am really high on him. I think he's going to be really good. So, see him in action. Seems like fun. Oh yeah, this is gonna be crazy. I don't even know what to expect with this, to be honest. I literally just built this deck right before this, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, but I'm very excited uh, to see Snoke hit the hit. Well, hit the table. Yeah. Oh, you ready, good sir? Yes, let's do it. All right. So, do you think Snoke is gonna be the? top dog in this uh, meta that's coming? I mean, he doesn't do damage himself, right? So he's going to Three. need a good pairing. I got five. And I guess I'll take the shield, so you can go ahead and have your guardian first. Great. Um, but, I mean, his stats seem good. His power action seems insane. His dice is just okay. But, you know, we've seen that work before, so... Um, what was it? I, uh... Sir Chris or uh, CX3 now, right? Uh, he was just like, he's like one damage away from being a Jar Jar. A Jar Jar. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, it's, it's, it's a funny thing, but that power action is very, very good. So Yeah, yeah. I, I think you probably play him for the power action. Like the second dice only cost you two points, but I think you don't, you'd rather have other dice. So I think a lot of people will be playing him single, but if you have two points, the dice is definitely worth it more than a plot probably. Right. So yeah, like that's true. It's line up. It's uh, worth it to throw it in there, but I like it. I like it a lot, but another, just like the scariest rare that I know that's coming out or that's already out is freaking Plo Koon. I mean, it just, it, it, the text on it reads do broken things. So we'll see if those things are good enough. I mean, the oh dice isn't gosh. exciting or exceptional, but uh, yeah, the fact that, 
I don't know. They're, are they going to have to start designing around him and making sure you don't have crazy abilities? Maybe, I, I don't know. It's, we'll see if Padawans is good enough to actually, you know, break him properly or if there's something else that does it. But yeah, it's a lot of possibilities right now. I'm worried. Let's start off with Salvage Stand. That is not cool. Um, we then are going to have to... Hmm. That's when you roll money. And so this is Sienna Ray ruining my day, huh? All right. I guess we will vibro knife over here for one and oh, ambush. No. Here it starts already. We'll oh, go ahead good. And ancient over there, so I don't have any money for you to take away. All right, Eric. You're, I'm gonna make me shake my boots already. <laughs> so how do you? What, uh, I to do. what was that? Sorry. Sorry, that's just not what I wanted to do. But you know, <laughs> card. Zero cost cards that make people change the way they play are great. There you go. Uh, I'll pay two. Hidden Blaster, get rid of one of your shields, and power Which action at the same time. Gone? Sure, which shield do you want gone? Uh, let's get this shield gone, and then I will do one damage to that. Yeah, get that shield away as well. Shields away. Alright, uh, let me get this power action token thing. There you go. Nice. I might need another one of those. Alright, um, then let's roll them out. might need another one of those it's understatement of snoke um, <laughs> so you can get three shields and you can ping one so how did you get into this destiny jazz um so i was starting uh so my competitive game and i am a competitive person was uh playing uh, magic online and so that was my thing and but i had a casual game night happening on friday nights and that was with people from my kids' school, some friends I knew from college myself. Mm -hmm. And so we had a good time there. And one of them one time wanted to try this new game called X-Wing. And I was like, well, that seems kind of interesting. And so he convinced me to go down to this. Well, before that, he actually said, hey, I know these people that have this card shop or game shop called Covenant and like showed me pictures of it. And I was like, well, that looks kind of cool. But I'd been to game shops before and I was just like, you know what? I'd rather just play at home. I'm more comfortable there and everything. Gotcha. But anyway, with X-Wing, he uh, convinced me to go down there and this shop is laid out unlike any shop I've ever seen before. It's most shops are, well, we want to sell you stuff. And if you uh, uh, happen to want a game here, we just do that as a thing. Whereas Covenant was all about, hey, let's make the play experience as good as we can. And this little corner over here has stuff to be sold. So it was, you know, a different experience than I ever had before. And so we would go down there every other week playing uh, X-Wing, which was enjoyable. And um, as I was doing it, I got to know some of the regulars there, some of the people at the shop, and they went out, I guess, and uh, people at Covenant went to Gen Con and were the people that were reviewing Destiny. And they came back with the starter sets and were playing around with it. And so after one day when Keith went home early, I stayed around and uh, watched them play and asked to play a couple and they allowed me to. Ooh, money. I wish I could do something about that. Um, no, that that's awesome. Like, I'm just so jealous of you but being like in such a close distance to Covenant Shop. Oh, it's amazing. I'm, yeah, I... <laughs> I am feel extremely fortunate for that. Um, so anyway, they were nice guys. Let me play. And uh, when the set came out, I was like, you know what? I'm ready to try something in person competitive. And so I've almost completely stopped playing Magic Online. And this has become my new jam. Um, so I'll grab one money that hopefully you can't mess with. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to our power action. Yep. Three money? That's three money. That's a lot. I will pay money for... The dreaded BB-8. BB <laughs> so uh, that's your staple, huh? You have to have it in every deck? <laughs> it has become my thing, and maybe it's not good enough, but I, I mean, he's still good. Like, end of turns, getting this one money and being able to turn it into something valuable. So I am quite it's a fan. So good. Um, you have no more money. No more money currently. Could have a guard. I'm pretty sure I would have guarded away that 
dollar over there if I could have. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah, let's chance it. All right, going for the four. That's fine. You're like, I can heal it back. <laughs> Depends where you're going, but yeah, maybe. Oops. Got one dice doesn't count. Hey, disrupt. Good job, BB-8. Great job. Oh, and you got this one too, right? Nope. Sorry, that was. Oh, that was for the. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh yeah, because you haven't rolled it out yet. All right. Um. Yeah, go ahead and do the forward to this battle. That guy. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and do a disrupt. Sounds good to me. So you can't use your three card mitigate, three cost mitigation, whatever that is. Uh, let's go ahead and pass. Add him on with the vibro coming out. So I know a lot of people don't know. Oh man, that's five damage already. Um, but what made you made you so uh, such a dominant figure in Star Wars Destiny? Um, so it has to be the fact that I was able to win a uh, three relatively big events with the Padawans deck. So I, after um, Spirit Rebellion came out, I took down the uh, Covenant um, or the Destiny Weekend event at Covenant. And so at that point, I didn't even know if, how good I was competitively and stuff. And so that was a fun thing. And looking back at the videos you can find online, I've, you know, I've definitely improved since then. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to take down right after um, Legacies came out. The first uh, regional that allowed uh, Legacies in it was the Dallas one. And so that one, uh, I was able to win with Padawans. And then when the Tulsa regional came out, uh, in March, so that was in January. And then in March, I was able to win that one again. So I was able to win two regionals, uh, with a very similar Ayla Padawan Padawan deck. Although the first one, Destiny Weekend was Ray Padawan Padawan. So I've been playing some form of Padawans since the beginning. And, uh, I wrote some articles about it and, um, yeah. So and here you are. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm, why I'm here. Yep. So do you, uh, so you, you for yourself like into the competitive scene or do you, do you like casual formats? What do you like? Oh, so, I mean, I like playing stuff competitively if they're, and this is why, uh, the Tulsa, the Covenant Masters series that's coming up is I think my favorite, and I will actually use this for rerolls, which is just sad, but, <laughs> um, competitively dra or drafting is my favorite format by far of mm -hmm. uh, any of the formats. Um, I'm a, also a pretty big fan of any team format. So, all righty, we'll do four and finish off CNRA. These two things. Um, and then we'll go ahead and put two into your other guy. Grab money. Ow. Yeah, that was a massive turn one. I like it. There's no healing going on, so we'll just reset. Uh, but I also really like the team events. Mm -hmm. In general, like, you know, from Magic Record and stuff like that, I'm just a huge fan of team things in general. And so I actually, uh, Sugi from Knights of Ren allowed me to help organize their 3v3 tournament at Worlds this year. And so we got to do that, and that was a ton of fun. So some deck building restrictions, but basically it was just uh, three games of uh, Destiny side by side by side. Whichever team won two of the games would uh, get to advance. So I've enjoyed that a lot. And oh, then, that's uh, incredible. And then, yeah, but uh, uh, since World was in standard format, that's what we practiced. And so uh, that is what we've done no i just i just really wish i was like in your guys area because it looks like that's where like everyone is so i'm like <laughs> us californians uh, are trying to get the love but it's hard to so I, I don't know i mean i think there's pockets right i mean um yeah there's pockets everywhere all over 
the country, right? And so if they're if you can't get enough to keep, you know, at least four to eight people there, then I think it dies at the store. And I've heard those stories. In other mm -hmm. places, you're above it, and then it grows and just keeps growing. So. <laughs> All righty, that one over here is going to roll out. But, I mean, I've seen the ebb and oh. flow even here. Wow, been rolling insane. Um, the ebb and flow even here, you know, when new sets come out, there's an influx of people coming in the shop, and then we get to keep some of them. And then over time, some people stop showing up. So it's uh, definitely... I don't know if I don't want to call it precarious because I think we have a strong group of people that are, you know, pretty committed to playing long term. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's at any moment, you know, a steam theoretically could die. But I mean, this is such a great game. So I hope that it's one that is going to last at least for a while. Uh, same here as well. I absolutely love this game. It's given me a whole lot to. Um really look forward to in regards to the game scene and spend time with my family, everything. Man, you are rocking me. Yeah, this is abusive start. So uh, are you playing anything right now? So online in the season six uh, um, thing by Ira, the thing that kept up the TTS season six thing, mm -hmm. I've been running Yoda, Elite Yoda, Ayla, and uh, Maz. It's a force wave deck to try okay. to use that. A single dice Ayla there. And so that's a lot of fun. And then uh, in person at the store, I've been running a lot of uh, Zeb and Kanan. And I'm trying to abuse the against the odds card, which oh. probably. Uh, do you know what it is? I do. Okay. Say, tell, tell the people what it does. Uh, uh, against all, you said against all odds, right? All right, so against all odds is when you're able to do one thing before they can't do, like, they have to, you have to do, resolve all your dice and then pass the rest of your turns, correct? Oh, no, no, so. Oh, no. Meow, meow, meow. That's all right. So, yeah, it's a little card that came out in Empire War. It's a zero-cost yellow event that says re-roll one of your own dice. Then if it just re-rolled the same symbol, you may resolve it, increasing its value by two. Okay. So... I mean, when I saw it, I thought it was trash. I think most people think it's trash. It probably is trash. But, you know, Zeb has three melee sides on it. And I put in things like, uh, I mean, Chance Cube is the insane play, right? You roll into that and you get it. <laughs> uh, I've got Diplomatic Immunity that has four shield sides on it that can go anywhere. I mean, anything that has a lot of the same heirloom lightsabers. Um, so, anyway, it's a lot of fun to play. It also rack rocks the... Uh, um, do or do not, which is that blue thing from the two-player starter set. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to abuse this mechanic of basically using a zero-cost event to get you some extra value. But it's random, right? I mean, you have to roll properly that one time. So it's not my type of deck, but it's a lot of fun to play. So I've been enjoying that. Oh, I love it. Uh, what is it? My, I'm trying to do that do or do not and that type of thing with my Finn Ayla deck as well. Mm -hmm. uh, freaking Ayla, it's so hard to doubt or like... Like, yeah, you can't even doubt that die, really. Yeah. Yep. That's one of the reasons she's insane. I'm sorry, is it my action or is it yours? I think it's your action. Okay. So I did damage. You rerolled there, is that it? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just going to stall. BB8 is good for that. That other disrupt. Um, should I do it? I don't know. It doesn't kill me, right? Before I've got a. Oh, you can just solution. dig four off the top. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll power action four over here. Over there. Okay. All righty, so I guess we go ahead and flip it do that guy to heal too. Mm hmm. And 
That's one of the things. People think they're so fragile, but... I will disrupt one of them. Even, though it, won't, my even though it won't matter? Yeah. No, it does. Heirloom lightsaber is about to come down. Oh. So, now that you've done that... You just have to naturally roll some money. Get those money. Do it. What since we're since where the force is here, technically. Oh, you're gonna get rid of my money. Yeah. Um Is there like when you pull your first box, what legendaries would you want? What six legendary cards would you want to get? So uh, this might seem really weird. I mean, I listen to podcasts, so I've heard a lot of this card spoiled, but I have not looked at actually the full spoilers. I mean, in my ideal world, I would know nothing that was going in to my first draft, and I would uh, learn them on the spot there. That's awesome. Uh, but that said, especially if you've been around so long, I have some real ideas for old man Luke, so I need a single dice of that in order to... Uh, a single die? A single die. So my thinking is single die him, single die Ayla, and single die Ray one. Ooh. 30, 32 hit points and his power action because most people are doing two two dice with him and one other partner where he's passing everything and I think if you can divvy up where he's passing stuff it's going to make life really difficult on other people figuring out where to uh, where to assign their damage. Oh that sounds pretty awesome actually. Alright I'll just keep doing this healing especially this one since it's free. Might as well right? I get to drop something else down for free here in a second yeah. You didn't roll him out yet, right? I have not. That's right. I was in the middle of... You're, you're choosing to do it, and you chose not yeah. to. All right. Get rid of Tactical Mastery, since uh, I can't do that anymore. Oh, thanks, Two Focus. Okay. I guess we will drop a free Shoto down to replace it. Um, get rid of Bait and Switch to reroll. Oh, great, Snoke. He is not... He's showing you his Jar Jar dice in this, huh? Oh, yeah. He's getting Jar Jar so much right now. So, out of everything that's been shown so far, uh, do you have a favorite card in general? Oh, um... So, that, there's a lot of different ways to go with that. I feel somewhat obligated to at least give Arnold mention to BB-8, because I found value where other people didn't really. I think probably the card I use the most is Trust Your Instinct, or in my blue decks, I find that card is insane. Or it's my play style, right? I'm basically changing tempo for extra free reroll mm -hmm. because you get to reroll a blue character's dice and all their dice and then draw a card. So Completely. that's at the top of my list of I think it's bonkers and it should go in almost every list with a blue character, and other people don't think so. Probably favorite from a fun side. I was playing Quinlan Voss Asajj for a while, and I just think Quinlan Voss's uh, character card is really good. So, I gotcha. I do like Trust Your Instincts talking about it. <laughs> yep. It just, especially when I'm so active in trying to get other value out of stuff. Uh, okay, uh, I guess I'll pass again. Alrighty, so how am I going to get this money? Do I just get it now? I think I do. Alrighty, focus plow to the money side and see if you can do anything about it. Oh, I'll pass. Alright, and I got two cash. I will pass. Maybe okay. two, put it out. Heirloom's there. Passing again? Yeah, might as well. All right, paddle. I'm worried. Stick side or a money side, either way is fine. Ouch. Ouch. Into the crosshairs, I say melee. Get rid of all those. There you go. And I'll claim, since it's an ambush card, apparently. Very nice. And that leaves me with this card, which I'm happy to keep, but we can go ahead and go on to the next round. I survived, everybody. I survived. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Ooh, that oh, was I'm so, I'm to. so, um, yeah, I'm very hyped up for uh, Luke 3 as well. Yeah. Uh, there's so many things that I want to do with that guy. No pun intended. <laughs> I accidentally drew my Oh, my back. gosh.
I love it when you do that in virtual land over here. Yeah. Can you imagine if you'd done that in real life? <laughs> I accidentally looked at all my cards. How, how would that happen? Anyway, so it's fine. Yeah, right. Um, let's go ahead and do stuffs. I don't, um, friends and low? Friends and low. That's a close quarters of salt that you're getting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, five billion, five billion weapons. Got it. Okay. <laughs> That's the problem with this deck, right? Is you draw a turn like this and all you get is weapons. It's like, I don't know. So that might not be the right way to play the deck. Although, sure, I can try it. Um, so who's going to die? Who's going to die? I guess this Padawan still has a chance of dying. Let's get her out there. I know. Thinking of all the possibilities here. Oh, there you go. You got money. Um, go ahead and roll out this guy. Okay. It's not what I want, but I'll take it. All right. Let's go the double shadow route. Let's snoke out, I guess. No. Yeah, it's Snoke. This was a blank. Oh, man. Um... I think it's got to be right just to roll out and see if I can knock off that guy before you fix his dice. Yeah, you ended up with a whole bunch of money and not much to do with this game, huh? Uh, this is... I'm scared right now. All right, um... There's already three. You can kill them off. Um, let's go ahead and... Pay one. Power action. Armor plating. Do one damage over here. Okay. Equipment. So I need to do two more damage, huh? That is entirely... Does armor plating get through the block? So if I have the vibro knife turned, that would go right through that, right? It would. You've got one money. What massive one money thing could you do to remove a bunch of dice? I don't think so. I just have too many dice to deal with, which is really the whole point. Uh, there you go. Uh, so what do you think of the coming meta? What do you... So, I mean, from what we've seen, there's definitely a lot more hit points is going to be around, possibly. Roger. Okay. And I'll reroll this one. Yep. And I will turn Plo Koon to blank. Okay. This is such a ridiculous card. Is it that good? It seems good. All right, so you're looking at four over there, huh? All righty, we will sadly take a heirloom shield. Oh yeah, I should forgot my shadow shields. That's a thing. I haven't played with that. Um... You forgot? Yeah, you forgot your shields. That's right. Um, yeah, might as well do the four over there. Okay.
So his dice are already gone. So Snoke. That's the thing is with Yoda at least. I mean, he doesn't do damage, but Yoda seems much better once all his friends are gone. Snoke might have more problems closing games once you uh, take out. Very all his true. All right. I think I keep both of those, and I'm gonna go ahead and toss the raised staff and. I need to make sure I kill, so I guess I keep the focus too, just in case. But this should get me there. Let's see if some cool zero cost mitigation. Yeah, that was real good. There you go. Uh, let's go ahead and discard Tactical Mastery again, since that's useful. Do the same thing. All right, we'll do three unblockable damage to your Super Commando. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, anyway, the hit points on the characters, I think the games are going to slow down at least a little bit because of that. I think just overall, there's definitely hit point power creep. And at least hearing what Jeremy said it makes sense for his uh, plan of trying to slow the game down. So I don't know that's a good or a bad thing. It's just a difference in the game a little bit. Do you, here's the here's the judgmental question. Do you think this is going to be the spirit of rebellion all over again? Oh, where something just comes out and destroys something? Yes. I mean, I think that I don't. I can't give the designers too much credit because they're you know designers and developers are you know trying to do as best they can. But I think it was extremely fortunate we hit in Legacies a meta that there was like a dozen tier one or at least one point you know one decks or something like that. But there was a lot of very good decks, and I do not think that's going to happen very often in any card game, let alone Destiny. So I definitely think we're going to go to a smaller number of main decks, and if that turns into a one or a two deck scenario, or if it can be, I think six is plenty healthy, right? Yeah, so, it's very uh, healthy. Yeah, so, but uh, there's nothing, you know, Snoke seems broken. Some other stuff seems broken. Plo Koon maybe is broken, but none of them... I mean, I guess FN didn't even, people didn't know it was broken, right? So I think a lot of testing has to happen. And then even after it comes on the scene and wins a couple weeks in a row, there'll be time for people to say, hey, is this a real thing? Or, you know, is it like an OTK where there are answers to it, right? So I think it's doubtful that it's going to be a broken deck, but I will not put repu my reputation on the line saying that's the case. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to ruin the reputation. You go <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's your turn, right? Oh, is it? Oh, no, no, you just did the damage, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess I'll take a money. All right, let's see if BB-8 can deal with that. No, no, BB-8, the disruptor of the resistance over here. <laughs> um, I should probably play this, but I'm just going to discard the reroll. All right, some little more value from Smoke, Snoke. Oh, no. Wants to stay a blink. Charge charging it. Okay. Um, so I guess I take yeah. the resource. So I feel like I see exactly what you're saying as well is the fact that like everything seems its own version of OP, like overpowered. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, I think the balance is still going to be there, but it's just the fact of more stuff that we really have to look forward to. I mean, because if you go back to legacies, like, I, and I guess I use the word broken too generally, right? I mean, it's broken is a harsh term, but we throw it around a lot. But I would say like heirloom lightsaber is a pretty above the curve card. So I label it broken. So it looks like Plo Koon and Snoke are probably above the curve cards, right? Oh, yeah. And so it looks like you can do filthy things with them. Um, so the question is, is it un unrespondable uh, strong things or is it just really good, right? So... I think I grabbed a cash with my Padawan, so oh yeah, claimed your. Um, it looks like I'm gonna go ahead and just claim. <laughs> All right, let's get our other droid down there. And I don't have a dice. Is that in my bag? Maybe. Um, let me see this. I think I can fix this. Okay. I think you should be good now. I think. Thanks. 
All right, the R2. Let's get out here. So for that, uh, if anyone really wants to know, you literally just right click it and you change his name on the very bottom to RTD2 space, capital L, and then lowercase e g. Hmm. Capital L, lowercase e g. Okay. Well, since my BB-8 didn't do it, I guess R2D2 will go disrupt you. There it is. Keeping you poor. And then I will toss a vibro knife, and I'm rerolling just BB-8 and one of these two plum 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 dice. Uh, alrighty, we will focus. I know, then we'll get a two. <laughs> two side anyway, and we'll hit you for four. And then BB-8's gonna get a shield on whom? I guess this guy. We will let you kill a pad one if you're able to find some damage in your deck. I know, we'll see it. Alrighty. And five cards. Alright then. But yeah, I think when they, you know, they were trying to keep the game quick, which makes sense. So they made Vader a 13 hit point character, and I think they were thinking that's, you know, as high as they were going to go. And then the Emperor was 15, which was fine for a one character thing. But I think they really had these mental stops on how high HP was really going to get. And I think at some point they were just like, if we want this game to go on longer, we're just going to have to let that health pool grow a bit. So the question is, is, you know, early days of Magic, the cards just got better and better and better mm -hmm. to keep it interesting. And then the old cards just eventually was like, why would anybody play this when the new stuff is so much better? And I think that's, if you keep doing that as your uh, way to keep, things interesting that's not uh, sustainable right eventually everything's just gonna have to grow out of control so completely uh, but if it's just the hp and a rebalancing which it looks like maybe it's what they're trying to go for i mean that makes complete sense and um are you waiting for the rotation or are you like uh, so it'll open other doors right i mean i is <laughs> even though it hasn't seen like great competitive play like tired of hol holocrons being out there right i mean i've used them i find them great mm -hmm. I, mean, I feel like i have to put um force illusion every single blue deck i play just because it's that strong right so um but i'm not like antsy to get rid of what we have right now yeah <laughs> really i know some people were getting tired of like the uh legacies meta but the fact that you have so many competitive decks means it hit this sweet spot and i could probably play it in that meta for years to come and been happy right so, yeah two indirect all righty plo will take two more there you go and i don't know if he's going to survive so we'll go ahead and try and spin it to three see if we melee it. ah that makes sense and in motiving nope He's gonna stick around and Plo Coons O penis with his one one focus over here. <laughs> yeah, I traded Ayla, who had a fo very virtual focus, for another guy with focus. I'm not even that much of a fan of focus, especially if I have some cards to pitch. I'm normally rerolling my focus sides. Yeah, but uh, I mean they are nice aces in the hole for you know keep making sure you don't have minimum. And when you combine them with something like um, Power of the Force, where you can turn it into a Focus 3 or 4 or 5 or something like that, they get really good. Which makes sense. I gotcha. <laughs> One money. All righty. Let's go ahead and just bring some... I'm just intrigued. I'm watching everything that you're doing. <laughs> oh, there's that special. Um, he doesn't like you. All righty, I have to do something else with that die. Is it worth getting more money or just rolling in what I have? I guess I don't need to be greedy. You've got one money to mitigate with and two cards. <laughs> Salvage and the double. Need that quarter portion. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll pay one to 
over right here and get a shield. That is a little bit better. Redeploy if nothing else. Uh, let's go ahead and just pass. Alright. You know what? I'm so far ahead. I'll close quarter assault you. Get the last card of your hand. Okay. Well, I will happily pat. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to claim. But, um, no, yeah, I, like the rotation, I think, is going to is going to be a nice shake on everything. But my thing is with this, are you are you, what are you going to do with your awakenings currents? Are you more of a collector with them or are you going to like try to sell them off for someone that wants to actually keep going with the infinite? So I will probably keep them. And I mean, at some point, you know, I love drafting, so I'm going to build a cube at some point. So that would be important for that. Um, but I. I guess I just like having them around because, I mean, this is, you know, a phase of my life where I've just been invested in this game. So, you know, it'll be nostalgic at least for a while. And then if for some reason, if I do choose to go into infinite or something like that, they will be available to me. Or if that's a thing that we're, is supported by FFG Stronger or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just really hoping that they, they already promised that wave 10, right? Yes, all the way up to wave 10. So that that's very promising. Yes, I mean, the fact that they're thinking that far ahead is great. Um, I mean, I'm... Obviously, you know, with Netrunner dying and being cut off and stuff like that, it always gives you some cause and concern. I haven't really had to live through this like other people have, but uh, the fact that they are thinking that far ahead makes me feel like it's it has a really good shot of staying around for years to come right i mean if i had to bet i would think five years from now destiny was still around and i think it has a good chance of being strong at that point but oh i really really hope so because i like what was it i just got done watching team covenants uh latest podcast that they just did okay and uh they were just talking about like you know thinking of all the reasons why they're they chose to close down netrunner even though they you know just revamped it right yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and hopefully that one of those big main reasons is just for that reason of they're getting ready to really go fully expansive on this. Mm -hmm. Three, you're killing me, aren't you? That's Five, it. six, eight, that's 12. Oh, wait, no, two of it. Sorry, what so, did you say? I'm at, I'm at 10. Yep. There's a chance. What you're saying is there's a chance. Oh. I totally miscounted. Huh, that's funny. Uh, well, then she has a base side, right? I'll go ahead and BB-8 try and <laughs> right now. BB-8 saved me from my own miscalculation. Hey! Focus into it, and that'll be the one. There it is. See, that's why BB-8's needed in this deck. To fix my math problems. BB-8 OP. <laughs> No, really. Uh, thank you so much for the game, Eric, and thank you so much for the time for tonight. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to say to uh, the Destiny community? So uh, I was able to go to the the Covenant Masters draft, uh, but I didn't play this time because I got in from California late. But uh, I was there, and there were 30 people there, and I got in there to watch the last three rounds of the Swiss portion. And uh, there are people having a lot of fun there. And so they're doing those, I think, every month for the next some number of months. And they're going to have a championship after that. But if anybody feels like they uh, are interested in drafting, people there are having a great time. And uh, they should come out and join us because I think it's going to be a blast. Like, I'm so jealous that uh, you're actually able even, like, step foot in there. Like, I don't know. Like, I really wish I had a game store that is, like, Team Covenants in general. So... I mean, yeah, I, I, if I didn't have Team Covenant, I probably wouldn't be playing Destiny, right? I probably would still be online doing something else. So uh, I feel extremely fortunate to uh, have lucked into this or being pulled in this. I mean, yeah, I, he, I almost had to be tricked in order to go. <laughs> I'm very happy it happened to me. Uh, with that being said, we're going to plug away on this. Uh, guys, if you guys don't know who Team Covenant is, you're under a rock, but if you, uh, 
if you don't, for some weird reason, there's going to be a link to both the draft series. I mean, the the draft masters as uh, sign up, as well as the YouTube for Team Covenant in the description below. So I highly, highly suggest that you guys go check them out. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I really wish I can go. Uh, I can't go to the July one, but I know for a fact I'm going to try to go to the August. And we'll see and hopefully see you there, Eric. That would be awesome. I look forward to seeing you, Monk. That would be incredible, man. Um, anything else? Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. All right. Thank you again, Eric. Let me sign off. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Truly appreciate it. This has been another episode of a Padawan story, Eric Wainwright edition. And I'll catch you guys next time on the battlefield. Have a good one, everyone. Peace.